Well, welcome there, Tony Enderly. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Ridiculously Human podcast, buddy. Uh, awesome. Listen, uh, amazing to be part of the, the show and, and sharing the story and energy, huh? Yeah, bud. Um, yes, I've been watching a lot of your uh, your stuff on on YouTube, your swims, and um, you know, like going through your websites and stuff. And uh, yeah, you are quite the machine. If I <laughs> if I you know, do you don't mind me saying? Like, it's it's really inspiring to to see what you've done in your life and um, through all the swimming races and stuff that you've done. Uh, but actually, uh, you came onto my radar through a, an ex colleague of mine, uh, Craig Alderson. And, um, yeah. you know, I'm really glad that he, he kind of introduced us and, and it's quite funny actually that this week I, I messaged Craig and I was like, Hey, but I'm, I'm chatting to Tony, uh, on, uh, on Thursday, you know, like, have you, have you got any questions? And I, and, and I just thought, ah, you know, I won't say anything about the rugby because, you know, he's Kiwi and they've had a so, bit of a rough run lately. And I was like, I, I won't even go there. You know what I mean? Just like, there, there's no point, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. I mean, it's a little bit of a hiding, and uh, yeah, living in Switzerland, I've got a, a few Kiwi mates, and I've got a few mates that moved from Switzerland to New Zealand, and as the the you know the the chirping's been amazing, but uh, listen, they're gonna come back. So we we know we know we know the All Blacks and the Kiwis and what they're capable of doing, and uh, when their backs down, they they'll bounce back. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I was also like, I'm not going to say anything. Um, but then his reply, like he he went straight in there for the kill. Like, you know, he was like, oh, it looks like the box are, uh, are, get, are getting given the kiwi, the, the kitty gloves by the refs because of Rusty shouting. And I was like, I was like, bud, I, you know, you didn't have to go there, but now I'm going to have to have to respond. Exactly. <laughs> uh, exactly. Funny stuff, uh, so, so Tony, um, I think it was about uh, like 14 years ago, uh, you were sitting um, in Cape Town uh, with with one of your buddies, might have been a couple of your buddies, and uh, mm. you were talking about like his mom and uh, her cancer, and then yeah. you were also kind of, I think, thinking about the future and, and how old you boys were getting, and you you yeah. decided, we've actually got to do something with our life, you know, and um, yeah. that was kind of like a quite a meaningful conversation, wasn't it? Yeah, listen, it was, uh, I mean, I look at uh, my journey and, you know, uh, local uh, Lovick Strand boy, table with your old boy in Cape Town, uh, you know, real estate business, family business. And when I went into the real estate business, I had uh, an amazing time. I, I got into new developments and um, did really, really well, bought a couple of properties. And I thought I was like invincible. I was this cocky, you know. A kid who was doing really, really well, and all of a sudden the uh, world credit crisis came, and lost all my properties. Uh, had to sell up everything, move back at home, um, and my mate. And it was that time during that credit crunch. I was having a, a drink with Simon, and a very good mate of mine, at the, the Doodles Beachfront, having a couple of beers, and we we're moaning about life and going, you know what, life's so terrible. You know, uh, what's happening in the world, and we were just moaning. And my mate just said, Simon, just said, Tony, you know what? We're young, we, we, we're healthy. Here's my mom, she's busy, you know, battling cancer, and we're here moaning uh, about life, you know, at the age of um, 32 years old. And, um, you know, let's, you know, and we had a couple more beers, and he was looking at Robin Island, and he said, Why don't we swim from Robin Island to Bloberg? I said, You know, like it's 13 degrees, we in a speedo. That, you know, I said, well, let's do it. Let's uh, put a little action uh, plan together. Let's speak to people that have done it. Uh, let's put some training down and let's raise some money for cancer. So, you know, there we are, brave and bullish. You know, we're going to swim Robin Island. Uh, that following Monday ended up going to go buy a Speedo. So, I mean, I used to swim in, in primary school. I was pretty good swimmer in primary school, but in high school, I didn't do any swimming. And... A month later, you know, the, the training got a little bit uh, better. And I still said to my mates, I said, are we like crazy to get into the Atlantic with great whites and sharks and all the other uh, animals out there and to, to do this? It's only we've committed, we're training, we're going to do this. So we just met uh, other amazing swimmers like Ryan Stramrud and Kyle Palferman. Um, a lot of the guys that had done it, there wasn't a lot of people that had done the Robin Island swim, but it was quite... Uh, I mean, it's still a massive feat just to do a Robin Island swim. And six months later, ended up doing uh, the Robin Island um, just under three hours. 
And I said, never, ever again. It was like, that was the toughest thing I'd ever done. Uh, it was it was a cold morning. Um, and I said, done it. Amazing. Never thought I could do it. Tick the box. And all of a sudden, this, this uh, need of uh, the, the people that we met teaching us that, you know what, if you put your mind to it, you put a goal down, you do something that's going to push your boundaries, train for it, surround yourself with the right people, and you can do a, a lot of other cool things like that. And that's really where it started, where we just changed our, a little bit of a mindset. And that swim then, you know, led to doing a couple more Robin Island swims. Um, and the, the, the crazies um, that did it often um, – Said Wallace and you know Ram Barkar, who's a very well known ice swimmer. Said, "Well, we're gonna do an ice swimming championships in Fraserburg. Gonna be the first in the world to do a mile in like two to five degrees." I said, "Guys, that's crazy." And the same mates Ryan comments and listen, you said that about the Robin Islands. Let's give it a go. And we ended up doing a mile in Fraserburg and Fraserburg in the winter in the crew. Um, and that was again an, another tough toughest thing I've ever done and all these guys just brought out the best in you because you know when you think that you can't do something and you've got other friends to help you get to that point um it, it started unpacking who I was as a person um not just in business but in my mindset and going you know what you've got two choices in life when you wake up in the morning you've got a choice to wake up listen today's going to be a good day or today is going to be a bad day or you know, whatever is happening politically, you look what's happening in the world. You, know, you can look at America, you can look at South Africa, you can look at Europe, you can look at the war, all, I mean, look at um, global warming and all the things and the floods and everything else. If you wake up in the morning and you know you're going to have a good day, you put yourself out in that, that la you know, in that mindset, you're going to have a good day. Yes, things happen, but it's about channeling that and that. I've learned through my different adventures through swimming uh, to unpack that, which is, so it's been a really cool uh, journey. <laughs> but uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know you are mad. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> swimming, <laughs> swimming in a speedo, first of all, like, uh, you know, to Robin Island in that super cold water. Uh, but then I think the ice one was also done in a speedo. If I'm not, if I'm not wrong, I mean, Yes, so like uh, yes. ice swimming, um, speedo, swim cap and goggles. Um, that's, you know, that's how, you know, that's, that's the rule set, you know, cheating, you know. How, how do you, can you just tell me, how do you train like for say, first of all, the, the Robin Island swim, like, are you swimming in a pool? Are you swimming yep. in the sea? Is it a, a mixture? So, I mean, it's like any endurance um, event. Um, so uh, through the, you know, speaking to other swimmers that done it, it was the goal to swim seven and a half, the distance seven and a half kilometers. So with currents, try and train for eight, eight to nine kilometers. So the goal was to, to swim nine kilometers a week, um, where um, I would say uh, three, four times in a pool, and then to get used to the cold water to make sure that you, you can't just go out in the ocean and say, okay, you know, I've swam in the pool now for the last six months. I'm going to do Robin Island because you ne you're never going to make it. The biggest part of the swim is the mental uh, part of it because you're going to get cold. You're going to get a hypothermia and you have to train being in the cold water. So being in the water for 10 minutes, then 20 minutes, then going to 30 minutes and then really growing your, your body, getting used to the cold. And as soon as you could be in the water and that's between 12 and 14 degrees for an hour, that's when you know you would be ready. So if you could do the distance of eight to nine kilometers during the week during, with a pool and then being in an hour in the ocean, which you'd be in around three, three and a half kilometers, that's the sort of training you, you, you do for three to six months before you can do a Robin Island. When you're swimming in the sea, like your training swims, is it just you going solo or are you like you need someone to go with you? So with ocean swimming, very important to always have someone with you um, because you, you're dealing with nature, you're dealing with currents, you're dealing with wildlife. So always good. Um, in Blowbeck, is a really cool group of people that swim together. Um, in Small Bay and Big Bay, to have a group of you are very important. I mean, I'll tell you a story. Uh, one of our swims, uh, a good friend of mine, Buff, and I, 
the one morning it was just the both of uh, just the two of us and uh, there was heavy mist that came in and we started swimming out and the, the mist got thicker and there was a bit of a current that took us the back of the rocks of ro and we didn't know we thought we were swimming towards Malpos. and we, we like we i said like we could like a meter apart literally i said dude something doesn't feel right i can't see anything and we just said let's just sprint forward like we think because we could hear the breaking waves and it was the water was cold it was 10 degrees so to be stuck out in a rip in mist not knowing where you're going you think you're going down the coastline and you're actually going behind the rock always be with other people um don't swim in the mist it's not a right the right call 10 degrees very dangerous to swim in so always swim with other people make sure that people know that you're going out for a swim um especially there could be surfers there could be paddlers there could be kite surfers so making sure that you're in the group is very very important yeah yes man they're kind of like i don't know i guess my heart rate going just thinking about that you know? um, crazy. Crazy, it, yeah. it is kind of crazy yeah. when you think about it was there any <laughs> moment in that like first swim that you did to robin island where you're like yes i don't know if i'm gonna make this um uh, a few times i mean open water swimming my my hardest time is like the first half an hour to hour and then obviously my longer swims i've learned to channel the mind and what you think about and and you actually put i've, I've created a little bit of a, a a trick before i go into the water i put myself in a bubble and i put all the positive elements of my life in it so my, my two beautiful boys and my wife and the things that we've done and the things that we're wanting to do in our favorite uh place where we go on holiday and that's it. It's like a, a positive bubble with all those good things. And I get into that bubble and I try not let anything negative come into that bubble. And that's what I've learned over many swims. But at that first one was like, what am I doing? Can you make this? Are you going to die? Is someone going to bite you? Uh, you cold because my, my, your, your, your jaw shivers. And when you stop for like a feed and that you know you're cold because your, your jaw is shivering. So there's lots of points of stuff uh doubt that you, that you get at the beginning but then over the last 14 years i've learned so many things from each swim that i put myself in that space but you always have you always have doubts you know you're doing especially the longer swims when you're talking 10 hours 12 hours 14 hours and you hit that wall and you hit that wall and you hit a current and a jellyfish hits you and you're like you know can i carry on and uh your mindset is the elements um that is that pushes you through you know it's amazing when you do these races and you go through the different sort of experiences and ups and downs like you have that you you begin to learn how strong the mind is as well as how weak it is but then at the same time how like re resilient your body is like i think your body can do way more than anyone can imagine you know but it's our mind that plays tricks on us isn't it uh, listen, I call it, I call it, I call it the gremlins. You've got the gremlins on the shoulder and you've got them in on your shoulder talking to you all the time. And as soon as you've got your self doubt on your shoulder, going, oh, you can't do it. Oh, you're tired. Oh, it's water's too cold or current, the waves, whatever. And that's in every part of our lives that happens to us every day. You actually just need to, you know, you know, you can swear at it, you know, give it a name at it. Get out, I don't need you out of my system. Cheers, bye. And you just carry on. That mind is so powerful. And we are only doing a small percentage of what we're actually capable of. Um, and if you start seeing the power of the mind in every day, I mean, I'm a normal guy from Blodick Strand. I didn't train for this. I just I surrounded myself with like minded people that taught me that the mind is really powerful. If you put the time and the training and the effort in, and you have that resilient mindset and you have the discipline and the tenacity and the belief systems and your your why is always if your why is big enough you can get through anything and the why is what's important in your life it could be your wife it could be your kids it could be your boyfriend girlfriend whatever the case is if you've got your why the right why in your life and that's got nothing to do about business or money or anything it's about what's important to you and if you use that as your um, little bit of the carrot in front of you and going, you know what, I'm doing this for a reason. So, for example, all my swims I've always done is towards a charity for a good cause. 
because it doesn't cost us anything more to link it to something to create a better good. You don't have to train any harder. It doesn't cost you any money. But when you're doing something, when it's not for yourself, it's not now in the halfway through the swim, you're going, oh, I'm tired now. Now it's not about you anymore. Now it's about the people that you are doing this for. And the legacy that I always use my kids for this is like one day when I'm not here, they can check it out. I get like a bit like teary when I talk about it, but I'm so emotionally in tune with what's important to me. And that why is what drives me. And that's my two, bo- my two boys and wife. That's my everything in, in my life. So when I'm in the swimming, I'm going, you know what? You need to suck it, suck it up, buttercup, because one day your kids are going to be showing their grandkids this. And the lessons that you learn that you can leave, that's the legacy that you leave behind. That's nothing that you can pay for. It's not money. It's not business. It's about those life stories that you can leave behind, which is what really fuels me and drives me, which is pretty, pretty cool. But you're going to make me choke up here now. This is the way. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, you're like, yes, let me get some oh, tissues no. here. But, um, oh, no. no, it's so awesome, bud. And, and I love I love the fact that you're doing it for, like, you know, for this great reason. Is there, like, any particular charity that you do it for? Or do you do it for various charities? So, you know, what I've learned over the, the times I've been mean, doing with Simon for the Cancer Association, or we had, we, we had started a, um, a, a swimming um, group in, in Cape Town when I was living there. And what we learned was, um, you know, charity is something that should be sustainable. So we didn't, we didn't try and raise money. We, we collect money and then people go, oh, what have you done with the money? What are you doing, you know? So Ryla, we... And try and link up, to, uh, link up to people that are doing amazing things um, where they need certain things. And then we drive that channel of fundraising to them directly. So at the moment, a very good friend of mine, um, uh, Andrew Chin uh, from South Africa. He's doing um, a, a amazing work uh, called Swim, uh, Swim for Rivers. And that's where he's helping villagers that, that walk three, four kilometers of buckets of water on their head. Uh, to you know, uh, to bring water to their village, um, he created well. They designed this hip hip and rollers, where it's this roller on wheels where you can actually fill water and roll it. Um, and he also puts um drinking wells into these communities. So that's one of the charities that um I'm really linking up uh linking up with, and they're doing amazing work. Um, and my wife loves animals, so my next swim, and what I'm doing now in February, the Cook Straits, I'm going to be uh, raising money for, for cats in Greece, because my wife loves cats. So I promised her this next swim is going to be around supporting cats in Greece, because there's so many cats that need need help and everything. So I try and do something that's, that's uh, to make a difference, but it changes. I mean, I did uh, some fundraising for Habitat for Humanity that builds houses for disadvantaged communities. The way I can make a real difference um, and not where it's the big, uh, the big um, charities that are really got, I, I try and help charities that are like starting, starting out. But every swim, my goal was really to, to try and make a difference as, as little, as big as I can. But it's, it's amazing um, what can come out out of a network when you actually just show that love and that energy and what comes out of it. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. It just takes kind of one person like yourself to sort of start something like that. And it, it triggers this kind of like ripple effect. And I think, uh, you yeah, what you're doing is, is just like super awesome. And, um, I love the fact that you've like hooked up with all these other guys and stuff too. And there's this real kind of like camaraderie in, in, in the swimming community. Um, I, uh, I was also reading that I think it was in 2013, you decided to swim the English channel, which, uh, I've crossed a few times on a ferry and I'm like, yes, see, this is uh, this is crazy, <laughs> but yeah. you, you, you've actually swum it. So I know in 2013, um, you had to kind of like stop. Um, can you talk about that experience? Cause that just sounds, yeah. Hectic. Yeah. Listen, um, you know, through, through my friends, Ryan and Kyra, uh, after doing Robin Islands, they said, Tony, I think we should, uh, we, I think you should become an intercontinental swimmer. I'm going, guys, what, like, speak to me. Yeah. So they, they wanted to do a swim from Spain to Africa, which is the Strait of Travolta, which is 18 kilometers from uh, Tarifa to Morocco. Again, I said to them, you guys, you're crazy. And I couldn't use that again because I said, listen, Tony, every time we said something, you've trained for it, you've done it. 
18 Ks uh, and we trained uh, uh, more than a year for it, ended up finishing that swim. And they said, you're ready now. You are ready to do the Everest of swims. And the Everest of swims is the English channel. So um, a very cool strategy. There's more people that summited Mount Everest than swam the English channel. So the English channel is the Everest of swims. And um, the, the, the challenge of the English channel is that there's a winter period of literally from June till September that you can swim it. It's the busiest shipping lane. You have to book two years in advance to get a swim slot. You have to pay that money up front and then you have to train for it. And the, the biggest mind, mind flip of the English channel is that you can train two years, get to Dover, and you've only got a week window. So if the, if the weather's not good, you've got four slots. So swim is slot one, two, three, and four. Slot one will have the first choice to swim and have slot two and slot three and four. So if you're not a slot one for that week, you might, there's many swimmers that have trained for two years, get to Dover, and they can't even get into the water. So that's like the craziness of the swim. And you have to pay that money up front because you have to have a proper skipper. So I ended up uh, training from 2011 to 2013, got to the English Channel. I started at the beginning of the season, so the water was 13 degrees, 14 degrees. So it was cold for the English Channel. Uh, I was, had uh, my brother and my dad, my, uh, my brother and my dad on the boat. I was invincible. I was going to do this. I've trained. My mind is strong. I'm the most positive guy. I'm going to do this. And the time just wasn't right. And five hours in, I started getting cold. Six hours, seven hours. I got hit by jellyfish, um, which, you know, just uh, paralyzes you a little bit. Uh, takes your energy. And then I started swimming away from the boat. And I always, one of the biggest rules that I've learned from my swimming match is that you, when you're on with a boat, the captain and your crew have got the power. If they say you're not looking good, they pull you out, safety comes first. So I've learned through through my years in swimming. And I started swimming away from the boat. My jaw was shivering. I said, guys, I'm fine. My brother and my dad said, listen, we're going to give you one, one more chance. I swam away from the boat again. They said, listen, how are you feeling? I couldn't really talk. They said, listen, you know what? We need to pull you. So it was around nine hours. I got into the boat. I just started crying because it was like two years of training. It was for charity. I thought I'd let the team down get my charity down. I was a miserable mess. I had my family waiting for me and Dover got to the port and I was like, you know what? I have my family, safety first. So anyway, the uh, next morning, having breakfast with, uh, with my uh, family, front page of the newspaper, uh, another lady, Sarah, was swimming uh, at a boat next to me, 34 years old. She was also swimming for charity literally three kilometers from France, her, her, her pilot and her brother pushed her like so hard, two kilometers from France, her body gave up and she died. Um, and it was one of those moments where I was going, you know what, you have to listen to your crew. You, you're not bigger than the sport. You're not bigger than the ocean. It was one of those moments where I went, oh my golly gosh, here's this girl, again, swimming for charity, Push right to the end, two Ks from France. Unfortunately, she didn't make it. Um, and that was just a huge eye opener. Uh, I walked back, um, got back to Cape Town, and a, a couple of months later, I said, You know what? I want to give us another go. So I booked for 2015. Uh, and I went back uh, 2015. Uh, it was just a little bit of an honor for, for Sarah. So I, again, I did it for charity. And, uh, and I just said, From that moment, was that when you've got a team, you need to be able to listen to your team um, and don't push yourself too hard. You need to listen to your body. You have to listen to your mind. No one has to be a hero. And that taught me a lot about in business and, and certain other levels of my life because you, I was always trying to be the hero to everyone um, and that can get you into trouble as well. So just listen, not try and do too much at a given time. So that was a big swim. And we went back 2015 and... Um, the worst condition ever. There was six other boats that were supposed to swim. Uh, that week, there was only two boats, and we were the only boat that made it. It was crazy. It was. Uh, uh, I was seasick in the first hour. My crew was seasick. And I'm going two hours in because you start the swim uh, 11.30 in the evening. So you swim six, seven hours in the dark, horrible weather. English Channel is not the nicest of water to swim in. It's black. It's horrible. And uh, my crew just got me through. De Debbie and Derek um, 
they run a, a water safety company in Camp uh, Cape Town, one of the best water safety companies in, in South Africa that run these big events. And I just said, you know what, just let's go through. And one of the mental tricks that I, that, that I learned was to get you through a swim like that. Break it down in milestones. So at half, when we go into French waters, I had everyone have Springbok jerseys and Springbok caps. So I knew that we were in French waters. Then I had other tricks where I had photographs of my family on the side of the boat. That was towards the end of the swim. I had a whiteboard with uh, friends and family writing messages and WhatsApps on, on how to get through that swim. So, and eventually 14 hours, uh, 215 hours, I got to France and flopped over. And it was one of the most emotional uh, moments uh, of my life because four years down the line of a, a goal to achieve the Everest of swims was like just like spectacular. And I think that's when it really, uh, really changed my life that I didn't think something like that was possible. Uh, and then I failed it. And then I trained to go back to it. And you have these journeys on like, these highs and lows and you unpack that. Uh, to how do you do that in your personal life with your family and your kids? How do you unpack that to be a, bus a better uh, business person? How do you unpack that to be a better friend? Um, and those levels, because one of the things and part of my mantra is live life now is that live life now and not worry about next month or next year or five years or 10 years because you don't know where you're going to be next week or next month. So enjoy it. Uh, you know, technology these things take that away from us. Sometimes when we go for dinners and you see these young people, you know, sitting right next to each other and they're on their phone. I mean, God, and I'm at fault. I think we're all at fault of like social media and technology and that. But it's unpacking that to understand, you know, how, how can we, you know, live a little bit better. So yeah, that was a, a roller coaster of notes, uh, that English channel, like four years, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. That is crazy uh, and like, like hugely like inspiring at the same time. I don't think people quite necessarily understand the sort of gravitas of that task, like how difficult it is to, to swim the English Channel. Firstly, it's like, what's it like 15K? What's it 20K? I, don't, I can't remember the exact distance, but it's... Uh, three, three, two to three, four kilometers. Okay, um, so it's the, the distance. So it's three, um, four and... kilometers, almost a marathon yeah. what guys run, right? Then you've yeah. got the, you said you've got the boats, you've got the currents, the temperature of the water, um, things like jellyfish uh, starting in the evening. I mean, can you just talk around yeah. the mindset of that? Like you're swimming... I mean, swimming in the dark must be kind of scary. And talk me through that, please. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, with the English Channel, um, you, you put yourself in that bubble. You know you're going to swim in the dark. And swimming in the dark, actually, in the ocean, is actually, I actually love it. Because when you're swimming, uh, not in the English Channel one, because it was just horrible. The weather was horrible and it was seasick. Uh, but generally, if you're swimming in the dark and when you stroke, the bubbles actually light up. So it's not like pitch black. Sometimes you have stars and, and moons, you know, that's quite uh, uh, pretty. Uh, the English Channel, you're not worried too much about sharks, jellyfish you are. So I think night swimming, one of my biggest ones, which was the Molokai Channel, that was like the night, coming to your night swim. Um, Molokai Channel is one of the part of the Ocean Seven. So after uh, the English Channel, I decided, you know what, I want to do this whole the seven oceans, with the seven toughest oceans in the world. Because I had done Spain to Africa, I did the English Channel, and now I had five left to do, uh, which is um, the Molokai Channel, which is from Molokai to Waikiki. So it's a distance of 45 kilometers. Beautiful water, but uh, lots of wildlife. Tiger sharks, uh, specifically, very important to, to notice. Massive currents. And the Molokai Channel, uh, again, trained for, for two years for that. Um, it was going to be my longest swim. But the biggest part of the Molokai Channel, you take a plane from Waikiki to Molokai. Uh, the boats meet you. You start at 6 p.m. And you're basically going to be in the dark for 10, 10 hours. You know? um, note to self, at 6 p.m., sunset, that's feeding time for sharks. Okay. <laughs> And then getting through that mindset, there's a sunrise the next morning. That's feeding time for sharks again. So mindsets of swimming in the dark, I think the Molokai 
taught me that element of like embracing or what you're going to think about and the mindfulness of being positive, of just putting good energy out there. Um, because you do swim with shark shield, which is uh, you put on your ankle, but that only lasts two hours. So every two hours you have to swap it out. And when the shark shield hits the water, you get shocked when you put it on. So it's like this whole strategy linked up. But Molokka was quite interesting because when I got off the plane, I got a taxi to where we start on um, the point of Mount Molokka. And when I got out the car, I, I hit my toe and I had a bloody toe. And I'm going, Tony, you're going to have a 10 to 11 hour swim in the dark with a bloody toe in the most like heaviest of shark or shocky waters, tiger shark. Uh, what's going on? And now your mind starts thinking. And as I started swimming, as I actually ended up taking sand to take the blood uh, blood cells off my, my throat just to, to, to see and then a blob of jelly of uh, Vaseline. Started swimming, leaving the island, getting dark, and I just see black tipped sharks, white tipped sharks, and I'm going, oh my god! I mean, they they're friendly, they're it's all good. And as I started uh, about four k's, I had a pot of dolphins that just surrounded me. And I was like, going, dude, I'm protected. I was like, you know, the big guys looking after them. I and mean, my my aunt's uh, uh, unfortunately she's not with us anymore, but she like did a prayer and saying, listen, when you leave the island. You're going to have dolphins that come up to you and, they're going to, and you're going to be fine. And then you go through that moment in a good space and it gets dark and all of a sudden a uh, man of war jellyfish hits me in my face. I'm going bang, like Mike Tyson it just punched me in the nose. Like, oh my gosh, you know. And I actually um, got hit a couple of times for about two hours, went to the boat in, in open water swimming from point to point. You're not allowed to touch a boat. So you feed um, every 45 minutes where you've got a paddler with you. You've got, uh, especially in Molokai, you've got the main boat that's got all your, your feeds. So I normally just do hydrate myself with a high carb, bananas, that sort of thing. And you've got a paddler next to you. The paddler's got a, a glow stick on. You've got a glow stick on in your hat, a glow stick on your costume. And then you've got the main boat, which is leading the paddler. And the reason why you don't swim next to the, the, the boat is that they've got lights and those lights attract fish. And those fish attract other bigger fish. You want to stay as far away from that boat as possible. And you can imagine you're swimming in the dark. You've got a, a glow stick to your costume, a glow stick. Do you look like this beautiful Rapala floating there? You just baked, buddy. So it's it's like these minds, these things in the swimming, especially in the shark waters, you think about it, but you actually have to just put it out there and say, listen, I'm going to be safe. Uh, you, you're safer swimming in the ocean than, you know, cycling on the road with the other cars. So you have to have that sort of mindset. And I used um, the, the negative of our friend Jacob Zuma, that's sort of not being political or anything. I just had uh, this jellyfish hit me and I said, it was a Zuma fish. Don't worry about it. Bounce him off and you just carry on swimming. This is for proudly South Africa. Let's get, and that got me going through those moments when I was getting hit by these, these jellyfish, you know, and then, uh, through, you know, talking about the, this emotion that you go through in the dark, started swimming and, and the light uh, in, in the water with the uh, fluorescence started getting so beautiful with the plankton. So swimming, stars are eyes, you get into like good mood, get into rhythm and you just think about cool things. So it's really, it's, uh, uh, it's quite a cool experience going through this. And then like one o'clock in the morning, I just, as a swimmer swimming in the dark, you just can't wait for sunrise because when that sun starts stepping up, the water changes a different color and you you get another uh, another burst of energy. Um, and But you also know what's coming down the line. And anyway, one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, the lights on the, our boat start going off. They start hitting the horn. And I'm going, okay, there's a shark or something in the water. They said, Tony, come close to the boat, swim towards the boat. Don't touch the boat. And what actually happened, there was a fishing trawler coming, a Chinese fishing trawler. They went down into the deck sleeping, put the boat in autopilot and was coming straight for us. So from this emotional cool to this chaos, almost getting hit by a fishing trawler. Uh, and then carrying on through and having this emotion. And then all of a sudden the sun starts coming up. And I think uh, Molokai taught me the most humbling, humiliating experience of my life where uh, Molokai was, I was hoping to be 15 hours in the water, 16 hours. And the sun started coming out to ask the crew, how long have we got? No, we got about uh, 
10 to 14 kilometers. So I knew we, we, we've got, got to hit the underwater ledge, which is this underwater ledge, 7 to 10 k from the island of Waikiki. And when you hit that, this is underwater current that hits uh, a shelf. So you've got the tides leaving out and you've got this underwater current. It feels like a, a under color, a underwater waterfall and it pushes against you. So I, I knew I was going to be an hour there. Hit this current an hour. I went from 10 Ks, 14 Ks. And then they said, Tony, this thing's a bit stronger. We need a hundred percent. Now I've been swimming 14 hours. I'm like, your shoulders are like tapped. With no energy left. Captain crew says, we need a hundred percent for the next hour to get through this thing. Put my head down an hour later, head up. I moved down again another three Ks. I ended up being in the same spot for four hours. And I just wanted to give up. I was at hour 18. I was done. I had like nothing. I was throwing up the boat. I said, I can't. I've got nothing in me. I said, listen, Tony, are you dying? Are you? I said, I'm not dying, but I'm like, I've got nothing in me. He said, well, listen, you know what? We've got some messages on the boat. Comes from to the boat. And my son had wrote, written, Tristan said, dad, get some rock from, from the island for me. You can do this. I believe in you. And then next message to next message. Ended up getting through the, the, the current and it was about 19 hours and I could just see the shore break and it was like 20 hours and I got to the shore break and there was all this uh, row of surfers at Sandy, Sandy Beach, which is a massive shore break. And all these surfers started clapping and this Aussie is amazed. How long have you been swimming for? I said, like, do like 20 hours. And he was like, incredible, tap me in. And I just remember going, oh my God, I'm going to die in the biggest shore break. South African swimmer dies in shore break of the ocean. I ended up just making it, getting thrown out, spat onto the, onto the beach. And uh, one of the swimmers, Linda, Lindy Kaiser, which is a very well-known Hawaiian swimmer, um, I actually had, uh, she was also unfortunately um, suffering with cancer. And I had her uh, name on my arm. And I had my, my kids' names on my arm, and that's literally what got me through and going, if you moan about what you're going through now for these 16 or 18 hours, where this Lindy, Linda is like uh, one of the most well-respected open water swimmers in Hawaii, you're doing this for it. Forget about it. There's another hour, two hours, just push through, drive through, and that's why it really got me through. But it was probably one of the most emotional swims, 20 hours, 20 minutes, uh, ended up swimming 54 kilometers. Um, that broke me. I, uh, I got onto the beach and started crying. It was an emotional wreck. And my arms were like, for like about two weeks, so I was like off paralyzed. I was walking like a, a Michelin man, you know? And I really, that was probably one of the most emotional swims, unpacking what you go through as a human being. Because in any point, you know when you do these things, it's going to be uncomfortable. And you know you're going to get tired. You know you're going to hit three walls, five walls, and you have to pick yourself up. And then what do you think about to get through? Uh, there were so many times where I can't do it. I said, I was crying, I was moaning, I was swearing. I said, you guys are lying to me. We all go through that in our life. And then I really unpacked and going, you know what? What is life about? Life is about experiencing this, pushing yourself through. And then how do you get through it? How do you pick yourself up? How do you dust yourself off? How do you push through? And, and what I've learned um, and a lot of some of these, if you just are moving forward, it doesn't matter how tough it is. If you're moving forward, stroke by stroke, you're going to get to your lighthouse. And that lighthouse could be in your personal life. It could be financial. It could be uh, in a family environment to a bad space. As long as you're moving forward, it's going to be tough. And that's what life's about. Things are going to be thrown at you. As long as you go stroke for stroke, you're going to get to the other side. And that's what. I take these things and I unpack that in, in, into, into my life. And it's, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but it makes you the, a, a better, more humble person. Because a lot of people say, are oh, you smashed it? I said, no, really. Hawaii beat me up. From the jellyfish to the mental, to the ocean, to the currents, that beat me up. And you actually have to have the respect and just say, you know what, you got through it. And uh, as a team, it wasn't me by myself. It was my paddlers that helped me. Andrew who's uh, my water safety and he does, the, he does the cool videography. He's feeding me, he's inspiring me, the captain, this whole teamwork. And then it's not just about the people on the boat. It's about my family and the kids and my brothers and my, and my mates surrounding you, part of your environment to get you through to the other side. 
this life is a team sport, you know. Um, swimming is probably the most boring sport to train for because you're in the pool, you have to put the time in. But it's about the people that surround you. And uh, my dad always taught me, show me your friends and I'll show you where you're going. And I think that's one of the biggest things I'm trying to teach my kids is if, you, if you're dealing with positive people um, that are also not pushing their boundaries, but are positive about life and giving good energy, they're not energy takers. They're just, that's who you want to surround yourself with. And that's through the swimming community, like you said earlier, it's probably, it's like incredible. And it's like in the rugby journey or the soccer fraternity, you've got your, your tribe that you're part of. And that tribe is there to help you to, to get to the other side. So, you know, that's my night swim. I went off a little bit of a tangent there, but I, you know, I just remember it in that way. Yeah. It's a, it's like a, almost an emotional roller coaster or like, you know, just a roller coaster of whatever sorts, but you know, you have this, I guess, first of all, the, the toughness of like just jumping into that sort of coldish water or just in your speedo at night thinking about the sharks and the jellyfish and whatnot. And then, but then you start, like you said, you, you take a bit of time to get used to it. And then you start enjoying like, you know, maybe the quietness, um, the, the bubbles, the, the stars or, or whatever it is. And then, um, yeah, but then you hit the currents <laughs> and you swim in the same spot for like four hours, but then you get messages from your mates and stuff. So it's like, it really, it is almost like this sort of like, um, sort of example of like how life is as well, you know, life is just full of those ups and downs, you know what I mean? And I guess it doesn't matter who you are. You could be the, the richest person in the world, or you could be the most poor person in the world. You're going to have these no matter what, because you are human and you, you're here living this experience. And that's just kind of what life is all about. Um, 100%. Yeah. I, I was watching, I was watching that swim, the Molokai one, and particularly the end when you spoke about it. And, and I was like, Yes, yeah, because I, I checked the waves and I was like, no ways, this guy has like swam the whole thing and now he's going to have to, he must be like completely buggered. And now he's got to swim. I was shattered. I was and shattered. I was shattered. And now he's got these shattered. waves, which I guess at the best yeah. of times, it's hard to like probably body surf them. <laughs> and then you've got to do it with And no they're shore energy. breaks. I mean, when those shore breaks down, that just explodes straight into the ground. It just, whoosh. I mean, it's why the power of that ocean. And I've never felt any power than in the wire in that ocean is just incredible, like wild, rough, like just absolutely incredible. You talk a lot about unpacking things and, you know, you've, you've touched on, on some of the, the, the lessons and stuff. Uh, what, what else has it like taught you maybe about yourself doing these swims? So, I mean, uh, what it's taught me is that um, anything you put your mind to, and you put the training towards and you believe it's strong enough and you've got a strong enough why you'll get to the other side no matter how tough it is whatever gets thrown at you um like we moved to switzerland in and you you'll know because you, you to where you're living now and that's a change it's different community different cultures but we moved here in COVID three years ago didn't we knew one or two friends and swimming, I started swimming. There was two other guys that I met swimming. They became very good friends with. I ended up in, um, started the Duke Rugby Club where he moved here uh, 20 odd years ago. And this camaraderie of people that I've met through swimming, it became you know, amazing friends and unpacked this, you know. So by, um, by understanding things are going to get thrown at you, things are going to be different, things are going to be difficult, things are going to be awkward you have to learn you have to engage you have to push your boundaries uh you have to get uncomfortable and the one thing that i've learned is that if you uncomfortable uncomfortable you're going to learn more about yourself and then you go to that next left i'm, I'm being uncomfortable uh, uncomfortable and that just teaches taught me that going push your boundaries give your best but also don't sweat the small stuff you are going to um, fail. I failed the English Channel the first time. I then uh, try after Malacca, I was like, built up, I've done 54 Ks. I'm going to smash the Ocean 7 in two years. I went to Catalina Channel and my crew got, my one paddler got sick. Uh, almost, uh, I got water on the lungs because I had to wait for the boat to change the paddler. 
and four hours in, I was in a very bad place. And from Molokai, uh, Catalina is only 34 k's and it's warm water. And so you go through these emotions and going, you know, you also need to just go with the flow. Don't put too much pressure on yourself because if you put too much pressure on yourself, even though you do good things and you, you train for it and you know you're meant to be strong and positive, you're still going to be hit with curveballs. It's about how you hit, get hit, get knocked down, and you get back on your horse and say, you know what, what can I learn from it? What, what did I do wrong there? Um, so that's when I was a very, I was too bullish to going, oh, I'm going to get this done now because I've done Molokai. No, the ocean and time has got different uh, timings for you, and it's the energy that you put out there that gets back. So, you know, I think if I can put it in a nutshell, it's like the, the mind, uh, the body, the soul, the energy, that comes hand in hand. If you're wise, strong enough, you'll get to the other side. But it's not a perfect story. You know, you're going to have the ups and downs and you're going to go down the wrong track and then you're going to get a good track and then you learn from that. And that's the journey about life. The, the, the perfect story of that, you know, having a, a family, two and a half kids and the perfect house and, you know, you retire at 60 years old and then you go for a life. Start enjoying life now. Don't wait till you're 60. Don't wait till you're 65. And I've I met the most amazing swimmers that are 50, 60, 70, 80. And they're still living life now. They're still doing things now. Um, so by also not thinking that you know everything, it's about being open and just learning and, and having fun and meeting cool people while you do it. Uh, that's, that's what really gets me excited. Those are great lessons and uh, there's, there's so much stuff in there. I think the, the one element of like community is, is so huge. I don't know if people put enough sort of emphasis on that, like in, in, in their own lives. You know, we, we actually all really need each other and we, we feed off each other's energy, you know, and, and like you said, surrounding yourself with good people uh, that, that think positively, that are doing good things in the world is something that we all should seek. And if we are not finding it, then we, um, you know, we need to make some changes. That's for sure. And the other thing yeah. that I really dig is that you said effectively the swims humble you, right? And I think that's what's the awesome thing about nature is like, you know, humans are actually, you know, in a way we, we're a little bit arrogant. Um, we think these are these kind of master beings, but all you need to do is do what you're doing, you know, like not even do what you're doing. Like people just need to actually go try, uh, you know, have a night in the bush one night, you know, just by themselves. Like maybe you can take a tent if you want, you know, but just go out yeah. there and, and try stay outside, like, you know, in, in the kind of wilderness and you'll quickly realize that, you know, you're not as great as you think you are, you know, and, and nature has a really good way of kind of like equalizing things or I guess putting us in place, doesn't it? So, uh, listen, I think that uh, 100%, I mean, we moved from Cape Town, a big city. Uh, we moved to a village of like 10,000 people in Switzerland. Uh, beautiful farmland, beautiful lake, mountains, forest. And we be we've become kids again. And that's what I always say to people is that there's no right answer. I mean, you don't have to be swimming, but, you know, go for a walk. It's human nature. If you get stuck in a rut, first thing I say to my teams as well is like, in the morning, get a routine that you're being active. You don't have to do crazy stuff. Just go out and explore. You know, when last did you go dive in the ocean? When did you go into cold water? You get exhilarated. When did you go for a walk? When did you go walk in the forest? When did you go camping? Um, find different unique things, you know. Um, you don't have to do extreme things, but just find out what works for you. Some people like dancing, you know, you know, whatever it is. But the one thing that I know is that... Um, I mean, my dad, unfortunately, lost him uh, about a year and a half ago. He was 80 years old. He trained five days a week. He swam in the pool, did his two, three Ks, and he was happy. It was, he's like, and that's what I've learned from him, is that you, if you're always active and you're doing something to be uh, fit, uh, you don't have to do crazy things. Just, you know, get that blood flowing. And, you know, you, you live longer. That's the bottom line. Um, and I've, I've had, like, a lot of people say to me, well, how do I start? Just, you know, you don't have to, you know, I didn't start, and I'm not an exceptional swimmer. I started swimming 14 years ago. 
I started swimming 10 minutes in the cold, then it went to 20 minutes, then it went to 30 minutes. It was small stages. You know, it's, it's, you, you need to go, you, you're not going to build Rome in a day, small steps. Um, and as you, you, you do that, you start understanding what you're capable of. And there's no right answer. Just do something different. As long as the blood flow is going. Cold water, it's been proven that uh, it helps with your blood flow and your capillaries. It's a drug, actually, because when we, we swim right through the winter and Switzerland, the water gets to two to three degrees. People are, you're crazy. I said, listen, try it. When you get out, your body shivers. Your body's alive. That blood flow, the, the bad blood uh, uh, cells is getting rejuvenated, and it's, it's a drug because you feel so amazing afterwards. You're like, wow. You know, so I, I just I try and help as many people push the mindset that the cold is actually good for you. Um, and that's what open water swimming is probably one of the fastest growing sports in the world because if, if you look at what, how you feel afterwards, it's, it's amazing. There is something great about swimming, you know, I mean, it's, it's not like, I guess it's quite like a solitude kind of sports in, in some ways, cause it's just you, you know, it's not like you can stop and like you're talking to your mate sort of thing, but it is almost a meditation because it's this, okay. It's the same kind of stroke, almost same pace, you know, especially if you're doing long distance and it's just you and your mind. And like, you know, if you can get sort of, sort of control of your mind and you like, just kind of like, cool, this is just like, Ah, oh, there's just a peaceful time, me to myself. Like there's something super therapeutic about it. And then if you're doing it in the cold water, like you're doing, then it's like your body's like really sort of um, taking in yeah. all that sort of good stuff as well. Listen, I think that the reason why I love it and so many open water swimmers, the world is so busy. If you think on a daily, daily basis on your phone, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, business, networking, so busy. My mind's like scattered. And then, you know, um, being a dad, being there for my boys, being there for my wife, being there for my team uh, um, with, you know, with our team real to excellence and developments and clients, life's so busy. But when I get into that water, it's just me, myself, and I, that's it. Because, you know, when you go for a run uh, with other runners or cycling, you're talking, you're communicating. In swimming, it's one of the only sports that you're in solitude. So you have to be very thoughtful what you're thinking about um, and you have to become very strong in the mind to understand what am I thinking about what what are the pros what are the co and I actually plan my whole day my strategy sessions it's like it's it's absolutely incredible so it really un unpacks everything for me it's amazing how doing a sport can like overflow into almost all other parts of your life you know and I'm sure yeah, like absolutely. you said you know it's like it's given you maybe this new drive or determination or whatever it is planning skills or whatever it is for your business you know and also being this inspiration like for people that work for you you know they're like they're like yeah see I, if tony can do that then you know maybe i can do it too and i think the, exactly. the that's just it's just um there's so many cool lessons in there for for people to kind of push themselves I think I, I think that's what I love about coaching in, in business is what I've learned in swimming to go and say, doesn't matter who you are or how young or how old you are or where you are in your life. If you've got a goal and you break that goal in like six months, a year, I want to do that. And you break it down to little bits. Anyone can do anything that they put their mind to. So exactly the story is that I started 14 years ago didn't think I could do a Robin Island. That went into the ice room. That went into Spain to Africa. That went to England, the English Channel. And, you know, hopefully in the next two years, I'll finish the balance of my Ocean 7. And I, I take it as an adventure, learning about new cultures and people. And just, it's this whole cool journey where before it was, uh, it was about doing the Ocean 7 as quick as possible, being the first South African or the first Swiss Learned it's not about that. It's about the journey and the people that you you meet, and the things that you learn about yourself and the things that you learn about other people. That's what life's about. It's not about being first or the fastest or the strongest. It's not. It's, it's about that journey and the adventures that we have because that's all that we've got. Um, you know, when we leave one day, you don't leave with anything. You leave what you leave behind: your name, your legacy. And the, the memories and the things that, that you've touched other people. And that's where they give and they're giving energy back and not asking for things in return. Where if you give good energy, I truly believe, 
uh, if you're not chasing the, the big deals and the monies and everything else, if you give the best to people and they give that best energy to people, it's going to come back to you no matter what. Uh, um, and it doesn't matter how that comes back, but if you're going to be a, a real chopper and you're going to be negative and you're going to just try and, you know, uh, trample people when they're down, that's going to come back to you, you know? So it's just being, you know, we're on this world. Let's be a better person. Let's try and make a small difference. If each one of us just did a small thing, just one small thing, uh, the world would be a better place. And that's all I, I'm trying to say. Listen, be the best you can, leave a legacy, um, keep fit, keep balanced. Um, and, you know, anything is possible. They say in Spain, two days possible. Anything is possible. Put your mind to it. Have the right people around you. And just going step by step. Um, and have fun. That's, you know, sometimes when we get too caught up with what's happening in the world, that's why I try not to watch the news anymore. Because you get sucked in. The media is more, there's 95% bad stories and there's very little good stories. And I think what you're doing is amazing because you're sharing uh, a platform where you're going, God, you know, this, check this out, check what these guys are doing, what this, these girls are doing. It's, so I love what you're doing because you're sharing the, that love and that energy to the world and saying, God, you know, check this out. This is, you know, and we're all normal people. So, you know, there's no one special about anyone. You know, I'm not special. Um, I, I just, you know, putting myself out there and uh, doing the best that I can. And one day, hopefully, uh, there's a legacy for my kids and the grandkids and, and, and everything else. That's, that's all that we really got. Tony, you definitely have like a great message and you, you're going to be leaving a great legacy behind you. I, I, I like what you say a lot about, um, I guess, it's karma, you know, like what you put out there you will kind of receive and, 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 you know, it's, uh, it's not necessarily going to be like, I don't know, wealth or whatever it is, but you might just get good health for your whole life, you know, but, but definitely, you know, try and make that difference, uh, be positive and the world will somehow repay you in, in some sort of special way. Um, I know your, your, your time is, is, um, sort of short now, but I just want to quickly just finish off with, with a couple more questions. Um, what's, uh, what are you most excited about? Um, for the future, like in either personal space or, or business? And how can people get in touch with you if they want to find out more about you and your business and your coaching and stuff? Yeah, so I think I've, I've got, uh, the first thing is what I've realized, uh, my most important thing is my family. So I'm trying to put as much time uh, to my kids as possible. I mean, my son just heard now he made the Swiss national side uh, for rugby. So I was like, wow, oh, like, like me playing Switzerland against France and Switzerland's not really a rugby nation as we know they're a soccer nation uh but really ex just exciting with, with my kids and my my youngster Kai as well and skiing spending time with the family so that's like really important and the business side from a real estate point of view just really um in the projects that we're busy with in Switzerland and in Cape Town um, and just helping people diversify our portfolios from a real estate point of view and a development strategy point of view and then from a coaching perspective, it's just literally trying to help people to get the better of the better selves of them out there by pushing their boundaries, by making uh, them understand that they can do a lot more if they put their mind to it. Uh, we live life uh, once, so let's you know live it properly. And at the end of the day, don't worry about when you're 60 or 65, because I think that the one of the one of the biggest things I've learned from people and family around me is that it doesn't matter how much money you have, you know, when you're 65 or 70, now you might have the money, but you might not have the health to enjoy it, or you might have not might not have the people around you to enjoy it. So what's the point of having all this money and you've got no one to share it with? So trying to balance again, yes, we, we need to make money to survive and to I think we're in the in the most stressful time globally about money and just look after what your health push your boundaries learn enjoy and and celebrate life with the people around you because you don't know what's going to come tomorrow don't have any regrets if there's someone that you haven't spoken for a long time a good mate or family member pick up a phone and say how are you doing not a whatsapp pick up a phone go for a coffee go for a beer go for dinner i've been thinking about you how's things going instead of getting stuck behind the technology side because it's easy to send a whatsapp it's easy to send a facebook message but like bringing back that community, sense of community and going, how are you really doing? So from my side is really just trying to keep life balanced. Um, and 
health and because you got these balls, you know, life having juggling these balls with family and friends and business and money and health. Which one of those balls? You can't drop one of them. If you drop health, you can have all the money. If you don't look after your strategies on what you're doing and everything else, uh, you you know, it's always this, you know, the highs and lows of life. So um, I think that the, the thing that I really, really stick to is that we've all got choices and there's two choices. You can be positive or you're going to be negative. What are you going to choose? Those are your two choices. Um, so be positive all the way, I guess. I think uh, people get irritated with me sometimes because of like Paul Monday, it's energy, it's this and that. I also have bad days, you know, but I don't talk about it. Sometimes that uh, can also hold you down, but I also have bad days. But I, I choose, if someone said, how was your day? I can either say, mm, it's a cuck day, or it's a great day, it's powerful. I'd rather leave someone better when I meet them than when, if I'm always going, oh, oh you know what, this has happened to me, that happened to me. People don't have the energy. Life's tough enough. They'd rather say, yeah, it's going well. Got some challenges. Got some hurdles. But I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get through it. And, you know, it's just sharing that energy rather than life's like this. And like, you know, that's, we all have those choices. Be positive all the way. Live life now. Have no regrets. And um, spend the time that you want to spend time with. If you've got people that are sucking that energy, cut them. It's like, it's like everything else. You know, they can take, take, take. At some point, you're going to say, listen, you know what? Uh, I've tried to help you. I've tried to give you energy. It's not going, um, you know what? It's don't, don't take this the wrong way, but it's, uh, that's, that's the bottom line. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's my point. Time is, uh, time is short in life, and you have to be ruthless with those energy suckers. Uh, that's for sure. Um, yep. So, yeah, just my, my last question for you, which I guess you, you've kind of answered like a, a few times, but, but maybe there's something um, more awesome that will come out now. But what does uh, being ridiculously human mean to you? So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big word. I think that um, just trying to push your boundaries and whatever that boundary is, is ridiculous. Because if, if you've done something that you didn't think was possible, or you think that's ridiculous. Like, you know, I didn't think I could do that. That's a ridiculous thought. Like my first Robin Island, I said to someone, you're like, silly, you're ridiculous, you know? So by, by putting that out there, it's, it's, it's something that's big and it can be a small thing, like jumping out of a plane or, you know, doing silly things, but it could be like ballroom dancing. It could be ridiculous. Like oh, you didn't think you could do it, but you know what? At the end of the day, you're living life now. You, you don't have any regrets and i think that's uh, i think the key moment of what i love what your platform is is about those ridiculous things but all of us are human yeah but they're really cool things that happen you know are just pushing yourself ridiculously <laughs> <laughs> i love it uh i i just wanted to say like you know thanks for being that like positive person and i, I think the world it already has like enough negativity or enough people talking about, oh, you know, this sucks and that sucks. So uh, just having, you know, you who like kind of, you know, you're more focused on that sort of positive outlook and and pushing yourself and challenging yourself and, um, you know, finding like-minded people. Um, I think the message that you have is like extremely strong and like extremely important. And what you're doing as well is like super inspiring, you know, like you, someone will listen to this and they'll go, you know what, actually, I'm also, I'm a little bit fat, um, but I know I've got something else in me, you know, and, and I want to be better. So I'm actually going to go for that, that walk that Tony said, and who knows, that might lead to like a one kilometer run, then a five kilometer run, then a marathon, you know, and then I might also do it for a charity because it's not about me. It's about the greater good of everybody. So, but your message is awesome. Um, thank you so much for Thanks, for spreading the good vibes and just for, for coming on the podcast. I, I just love chatting to you. And, you know, like it's, it's, it's sometimes, I think it's almost hard to draw out how difficult it is, the things that you've achieved, you know, like, cause I'm an old swimmer, like an ex swimmer. Right. And, you know, I've swum little kind of like river races, which are, you know, like two kilometers sort of long. And I know how tough those are. Um, so I would, have no idea how tough it is the other things that you've done you, you are like a seriously high achieving human um and yeah 
thanks so much for for being who you are bud oh gareth thanks i'm humbled to to share the story with you and uh, i think with everyone i think that last note is that if you did a kilometer swim or river swim at 500 next time do 700 then you know so you know what i can actually do 900 and then go at the next step do it in small stages um uh, anything's possible just keep on pushing keep on you know driving yourself but have fun uh, don't take things too serious and uh, just put that in positive energy but thanks very much for for the opportunity to share my story um, and I think that anything is possible for anyone in the world but let's share the positive energy and make the world a better place I think that's what we all deserve